Welcome to the Informed Pregnancy and Parenting Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Elliot Berlin. Today we are talking about Labor Day surprises with our guests, Daniela Rua, Dave Olson. Dave, do you have a middle name? Uh, Paul. David Paul Olson <laughs> and Sarah Wright Olson. All right, Sarah, you had a uh, baby uh, 11 weeks ago and uh, it was a little bit bigger than your first baby, just about 11 pounds. Yes. Okay. You decided to have this baby at the hospital. How did it um, How did it go down? So um, I, with my son, I did my water didn't break. I woke up in the morning and I had cramps, and then I started feeling contractions. Um, but with my daughter, um, I had contractions on and off for over maybe two and a half, three weeks, and they would come on really strong. It would start in the evening and then by the time I would be ready to go to bed I'd be like this feels really this feels like this is really happening and so I would you know talk to my husband okay we have our bags packed and then I think I texted you like what three day. times yeah, yeah like well okay every other day this is it <laughs> this is it I'm pretty sure this is it and we're I was going like um, would lay down to go to sleep and then she would just let me sleep go away. and I would wake up in the morning and I was like oh okay I guess this isn't didn't happen okay well we'll see if it happens today and so um, when it actually did happen I was extremely uncomfortable in this evening and um, started uh, sitting on a ball and was just kind of like not sure I was watching TV and I was you know just trying to figure out like is this happening is it not happening laid down to go to bed and thought for sure I was going to wake up in the morning again and um, I started I woke up at, th- at like 1230 in, in, in the middle of the night and uh, I felt the contractions were pretty strong and so I woke up my husband and um, he was like, oh, well, you remember what the midwife told us last time, like, go have a glass of wine and just try to go back to bed. And I was like, well, okay. <laughs> um, this actually feels pretty, you know, like this is really going to happen. So I went into the kitchen. I opened a bottle of wine. It was pretty expensive. I was excited <laughs> about that. <laughs> and I got hungry, so I made grilled cheese. <laughs> And um, drank my glass of wine and timed them for over two hours. And they were actually really close together. And looking back, you know, I probably could have gone in early and, you know, been probably a little bit along, like maybe four centimeters along. But um, I, I think at that point they were about three minutes apart and they were lasting for almost a minute. And so... Um, so now we're more like 2.30 in the morning? Huh? No. This, yeah, this was like 2.30. But it, it was from 12.30 until 2.30. It was consistent. Yeah. It was about three minutes apart. And then, so I got kind of tired after all the grilled cheese and the wine. So I, went, <laughs> <laughs> I went and I laid down. And um, when I laid down, it I slept for maybe 30 minutes. And then it ramped up again. And so I got out of bed. And I decided to get in the bath. And, you know, I had thought a lot about with my first um, pregnancy, my my first um, birth with Wyatt, I had a 17 hour of active labor, but probably like 30 hours of, you know, being in labor. And so having like the pre-labor or whatever that's called. Prodromal. Um, huh? Prodromal. Yes. And so, you know, I, I was thinking about it a lot beforehand and I thought, you know, I really love to have like an eight hour labor. And with my son, you know, he was almost 10 pounds. I pushed for four hours with him and it was really hard. I did not have the same experience as you, Danny. Like pushing down my babies takes everything inside of me to get them down. I mean, I pull from the depths of my soul to push. And it's like, I feel like I'm. I'm pushing them with, you know, like I'm almost out of gas and I'm just trying, trying, trying to push harder. Um, So with him, I was pushing for four hours and I was like, it's a 
love it if I could push for like 15 minutes. But by the way, just, you know, the, just the strength of mind and body that you have to have. And Dave's going to totally roll his eyes at this. So I'm sorry, babe. Um, but what, I, what I think is it's just incredible that you ladies do this. And <laughs> me, as a husband, doesn't like to see you guys in pain. Mm. So that's yeah, why I don't enough. like to see it, hear about it, or know that you had to go through it. Right. Yeah, mm. but that's that's fair enough. I'm gonna that disarms Sarah, you can me. continue on. That, really that, that was really good. Um, so anyway, I had sort of envisioned this birth, and I talked about it in our last podcast of sort of you know what I was hoping for, and um, and then I had I had had this bit. I'm gonna just rewind a second to before I went into labor. I'd had a few weeks actually of feeling a bit of fear and I was kind of keeping it to myself but just like okay this baby's gonna be bigger and like you know I really want to have a natural birth and you know an unmedicated natural birth and I was having a baby in a hospital instead of at home so things were different and there was just some fear that started to creep in and I was also I had just lost my dad so I was feeling like a lot of emotional, you know, hormones were up and down and, you know, all over the place. And so I was like, am I not going to be able to do this? Is something going to stop me from doing this? And um, I was just kind of worried about it a little bit. And so I started reading um, Spiritual Midwifery again. Mm -hmm. And... That book really put me back into the place that I needed to be mentally because um, it was these women were telling their stories and they were all so different. And it was really funny because they had this language that they use where they're like, it was so psychedelic, you know, and like they were talking about making out with their partners and like, you know, just like rubbing each other's bodies and everything was just like big and wild and just such a ride and so I was like yes that is what I want this is what I need that's the language I need in my head which is funny because I was totally riding a psychedelic wave and was saying things like it's so big oh my god can I just say I walked into your birth you were at Cedars and um from the front little nurse's desk where I have to get uh, yeah. my little badge and get in, I could hear you. And there's <laughs> there's like 30 rooms there where people yeah. are laboring. I could hear you. Yes. And then you sound like you're doing okay, just intense. Mm -hmm. And I walked in, and you were kind of leaning up against Eric, um, <laughs> almost like he was a stripper pole. And <laughs> you're kind of riding up and down, and you were just screaming, Eric, it's so big. <laughs> and I just thought, I, I thought I should just leave. I should just go home. I'm not needed here. <laughs> Which is so awesome. But, you know, it was this thing where I had decided to choose, like, joy and love and positivity. And I really wanted to take that and put it into my body. And that's that's what I wanted to feel when I was in labor. Because I'd, I had been through it before. And so this time around... I wanted to ride the waves with like a lot of positivity and laughter and just see where that, you know, how far could that take me? And, you know, what is it? It's mind over matter. Like they say, a, you know, a lot of stuff is, is, you know, where are you going in your head? And so if I could bring that, you know, to this. So that is what started happening is I woke up um, after that 30 minute nap and I got in the tub and I'm looking out all the lights are off and there's like a candle on and I'm looking out over the water and you know the moon is so bright and I'm riding these waves in the bath and I'm just I'm so happy and excited and I'm realizing like I'm gonna meet my baby and then I get out of there because I'm kind of cold I get in the shower and then I get out I start you know having these contractions in front of my in in my bathroom sink and my husband jumps out of bed and he hears me because I I'm, guess I'm getting louder at this point and I had been texting with my doula and she um, was like you know let's let's time these it sounds like things are progressing maybe you should think about getting to the hospital and 
So I was timing them, and they were two minutes apart, and they were lasting for about a minute and 30 seconds, which wow. is major at this point. It's like, oh, I should have already been in the car yeah. on the way to the and hospital. you're not that close to the hospital either. No, I wasn't. I was <laughs> not close to the hospital. But it's still, my in, mentally I was thinking, okay, like, if Eric's not awake by 6 o'clock, I'm going to wake him up, and we'll start heading because the traffic will start to build if we don't go that direction. And so he had jumped up, it's like 5 a.m., and he goes, oh, okay, it sounds like this is moving along. Should I start the bath? And I was like, I already did the bath. And he goes, well, do you want to jump in the shower? And I was like, I already did the shower. And he was like, okay, well, what do you want to do? And I was like, I already had breakfast. I I think I want (laughs) to go into the hospital now, grab your stuff. And and he was like, oh, okay. And I'm having a totally normal conversation with him and so he's like nah, she's fine she's like two centimeters along like okay he goes and leads back down and I was like hey like let's go you know like get <laughs> up do what you need to do and he goes but explain why because the first time you weren't the first talkative time I wasn't talkative when I was you know further along and I was in a totally different headspace at that point like I became very internalized but you know it was it was just very different. I couldn't speak. I was just moaning <laughs> the first time around. Um, so this time I'm telling him, okay, let's go. Um, we had planned on having our son at the birth, and it was something that we had prepped him for. We had been showing him birth videos, and he um, was three years old, and so he was so excited to go and to see it. And um, so... I asked, we had um, a friend staying with us, and I asked her to, you know, bring him to the hospital after he woke up and had breakfast. And Eric was like, should we go to a hotel or something, like, first so you can labor by the hospital? And I was like, no, we're going to the (laughs) hospital. He, like, still is in denial. He does not believe that I'm, you know, ready to have this baby. He thinks it's, you know. It's going to be a while. So I'm texting Dr. B, and I'm like, okay, this is happening. This is what's happening. Like, I'm heading to Cedars. And um, on the drive, it it was like I told myself, okay, now we're going to the hospital. And my body goes, cool, we're going to amp this up a lot more. <laughs> wow. oh so goodness. my body switched gears, and all of a sudden my contractions were coming, like, just insanely intense. And Eric has <laughs> my mix on that we had put together. So it's all this music, and I'm just singing the songs. I'm smiling. I'm, like, so into it. And but I'm also having major contractions, holding on. I can't sit down. I had to hold on to the, um, mm-hmm. you know, the headrest and like kneel in the front seat of the car. And he starts filming me, and he's like, "Oh, we're going to the hospital." <laughs> I, saw, I saw this you video. You saw this he's video, like, right? Why? Look, mommy's doing so good. Uh-huh. She's doing so and Sarah's good. like, Whoa. Yeah, and he was a- he was like asking me questions. I can't even remember what he was saying, but the <laughs> video we watched it later, and I was like, "Oh, this is hilarious!" Like he really did not believe it. <laughs> And then he parks in a parking lot they told him to park in, which was, like, a block away from the hospital. (laughs) And so we are walking to the hospital. We get in there. We get upstairs. It's a long journey. And then the lady at the front desk, she goes, she sees me, and she goes, uh, 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 you, okay, hold on. And then she calls someone, and she's like, we have a mom who just walked in. She's really far along. She, she goes, are you a second-time mom? And I was like, yeah. And she goes, okay. She's a second-time mom. She's like, we need to get a room right away. And she, I hadn't even said anything. I was just walking in and, you know, moaning, doing my thing, whatever it was. And then... Um, they take me back, they check me, and I'm eight centimeters at this point. Wow. And so they call my doctor. This other doctor comes in, and, you know, they're worried I'm going to give birth right away. The the nurse that had checked me, she was like, um, you know, at this point, I feel like, you know, your body's going to open up, and then this, you're just going to be able to push this baby out. And I was like, oh, that's very encouraging to hear, you know. I was like, okay, this is exciting. I'm eight centimeters, ready to go. And um, my doctor comes in. I'm still riding the waves. I'm laughing. Like, it, just how crazy it is that our bodies can do this. I'm singing these songs. I'm, um, my husband is sort of following me around and trying to help me. And I'm holding on to him. I'm kissing him. You know, just everything that I had planned on wanting to do was able to do it. And it was so, it was such a joyful experience. And then my doctor comes in and he go, he checks me and he goes, it's going to take a little bit to get the baby down. 
he goes, so, you know, I'm going to, if you want to take a shower or something. And at that point, I was like, whoa, okay. All right, so maybe it's going to be a little bit more than I anticipated. Then my body switches gears again, and it amps up even more. And this is where you come in because mm-hmm. it took me to another place. This is where I started having, like, the out-of-body experience. And um, Dr. B comes in, and I'm, like, not even in my head at this point. All I'm thinking, all I can think of is that I want to grab onto a pull-up bar and hold on to it and just hang. Like, for some reason, I wanted my body to stretch out out yeah, or something. Um, So, anyway, we try a few different things. Dr. B... Um, then starts working on what were you doing exactly? I was opening your hips, like your hip flexors and, and your pelvis, just making space for this larger than I thought baby to come down. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing is when you started doing that, it felt actually extremely um, productive. So, mm. and before that, it just felt bigger than me. Like it was, I keep trying to explain this to my other girlfriend who is, um, she wants to hear this you know, different birth stories. And she was like, at any point, did you feel like you couldn't do it? And I was like, no, I never felt like I couldn't do it. I just felt like it was larger than than me at this point. And that, I didn't really feel like that with my first child. But it got so big that it was almost, it would have been overwhelming if I would have started thinking about it mm-hmm. in my head. But I was just like letting it go and just letting it be what it was, which was massive, a massive thing to be pushing her down. And um, at one point I was on the edge of the bed and I was pushing and I reached around to grab under the bed and start pushing down. And what I didn't know was that I had reached around and grabbed my doctor's ass (laughs) and I was pulling up on his butt underneath me and pushing down (laughs) to get the baby down. And so he tells me that story the next morning. I didn't even know that that happened. Wait, he let you just continue to grab his ass? Yeah. Yeah, Wow. (laughs) Actually, for some of that, you were pushing down on my head. Yes. That was no joke. So you're pushing down on my head with one hand, grabbing around his Anyone who came into my wake got became a part of your grabbed apparatus. onto. Yeah, yeah, like I am not one of those people that is like, oh, I need to go off and birth on my own. I'm like, bring it on. Come over here, and I'm going to use you in some way. Bef- right before that happened, Wyatt came in. Yes. And that was kind of an amazing moment. So it was that. You and Wyatt came in. <laughs> it was that moment where um, it was so ov- overpowering at that point. But Wyatt came in, and he was like, Mama. And I turned and saw him, and I was so happy to see Doesn't him. it help? It this totally is, helped. I never thought said it said that. Would. Yeah, exactly. When you said that, I was like, whoa. You, you could see you change. It did. Because it, it was starting, like you said, to get bigger than you. Mm-hmm. And I think he actually came in in the middle of a contraction, and you were kind of vocal and... There's all this doctors and medical stuff. He knew Dr. J, which I think was helpful for mm-hmm. him. But um, there was a, one look of, I thought, a look of panic on his face for like a second. I'm like, what's going on here? And you were making all that noise. And the second it was over, you saw him, and you had that big, warm heart, and you just looked at him with a big smile and hug. And he totally let go. Not an ounce of fear from that point forward. He was just like... A commentator at a ball game calling the shots. Totally, I mean, he spent the rest of the birth like being like, "Good work, Mama. <laughs> Esme's coming. I get to meet my sister." You know, and he's just like cheering me on. And I came over and held his hand for part of it. And you know, he was just like, "Good work, Mama." And Eric was like yelling at him, "She's doing so great," you know, and. It was just like this cheering crowd, really, the, for that whole last hour, right? Yeah, because then you just got into crazy positions that I, I certainly could never dream of getting to, but also <laughs> haven't really seen before. I mean, you were literally at the end of the hospital, leaning off of it so far down, um, and it just seemed instinctual. You were just going. It, you know just... why? Because it felt so good to have my legs on the bed and have my bottom lower than the bed like mm-hmm. pushing my body down and you know whatever whatever that difference was of like being up higher and then pushing down as low as I could with my body 
almost falling off of the bed. I mean, people yeah. were holding, you were holding we me up. We kept pushing your bag up on the yeah, bed. Yeah, you were holding me up yeah. on the bed. Um, that felt the most productive, and I could actually feel her moving. But I thought, you know, it only took me 30 minutes to push her mm-hmm. out, and with my son, four hours. So I thought for sure she was still way up there. I mean, there was a point where the, I had a kind of a nervous nurse, and mm-hmm. she <laughs> was, um, she was, I, I'm not even really sure what she was asking Dr. Goldberg, but she wanted me in a different position because the baby's mm-hmm. heart rate was dropping. Yeah. And I wasn't, I didn't really understand what she was saying. And I thought that in when I saw her face, I was like, oh, she doesn't think I can do this. And so for a split second, I was looking straight forward at the wall and I was like, wait a minute, am I going to get wheeled into have have to have a c-section right now and i didn't even know that my baby's head was already crowning mm-hmm. so i looked at my doctor and he w- he was so awesome the whole time and so calm and he was like you're doing great it's gonna be fine yeah. it's, it's great you're fine yeah, and i was like okay a tough job sort of balancing her nervousness with reassuring and like not dismissing her concerns with also being able to really powerfully reassure you. Because after, after you had that exchange, I saw you just go right back internal someplace and, and just even more determined, like, I got this. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when I looked at him, though, he was like, he could not have been more confident that I could do this. And so then I was like, okay, I'm just going to ignore her and listen to him. And uh, by the way, she wasn't doing anything wrong. Like, she was worried about the baby's heart rate. And it was just that, I didn't really know what was going on, so it just felt I just felt nervous energy. And you know, when you're in labor, any energy outside of like what it is that's happening, it, it does alter things. So um, I just had to like get rid of it. But then um, they ended up turning me over, and um, and then I I had no idea I was about to push her out, and it, it, they told me that her head was out and it was the shoulders that they were worried about because she was big um which is why it got stuck why it, yeah why his shoulders out. had got stuck and there was a bunch of people in the room i didn't know that they were in there but it was the same thing with cedars where mm-hmm. they had like a lot of pediatricians in there um and well i guess you got flagged for dystocia right where yes. the shoulder gets stuck on the pubic bone yeah so once it happens like they assume it's going to happen again or or at least set up for what if it happens again the baby gets stuck and can't come out right so that's why you get extra pediatric helpers right okay so and that's also why he flipped you over onto your back i mean normally he doesn't care what position you're delivering but should there have been a dystocia he would need better access to you help. could actually see him too like you know on when i w- rewatched the video of him negotiating the shoulders mm-hmm. and like kind of helping the baby yeah but it was very smooth it was so smooth, and then you know I hear Eric turn around and say, "Baby, the shoulders are out," <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and then he was like, "You're about to meet your sister," and then Wyatt was like, "Esme's coming," yeah, you know, and then that's a the, great moment. There she, he said, "Reach down," and I reached down, and I was she wasn't out yet. I reached down and then did it one more big push and pulled her out of me, and wow. she was three months old. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, Sierra is the weight now at seven weeks. She's the same weight as Esme was at birth. At birth. Yeah. It was incredible. <laughs> Basically. It was almost like we once got this little um, mattress from Amazon, but it was for a, a twin bed. <laughs> and, um, you know, it came in this little box, and I thought, I think we ordered the wrong size mattress. It was like this big. And then you have instructions on how to open it, and it just, as soon as you open it, just it kind of expands. Like Esme. That's uh, <laughs> yeah. Esme was a sponge. <laughs> Came out and then just expanded. Just yeah. <laughs> dino expansion. Beautiful and sweet. But um, now it's interesting. A few things. Number one, both of you had experiences where most practitioners today would have done C-sections for you, mm-hmm. right? Um, if your baby measures, and it's not a really an accurate measurement, if your baby measures over eight and a half pounds, we start to get really nervous and talk about maybe you should just have a C-section because we don't know if you can push this baby out. And, um, you know, all the evidence sort of leans to the only way you'll ever find out is if you try. Right. And um, here you have this 11, you're not very big yourself, you had an 11-pound baby, no drugs, and also mm-hmm. no tearing. No tearing. Um, I did not tear. Yeah. So, and uh, you had a breech baby, no drugs and no tearing. No tearing. And um, so it's kind of amazing to take a step back sometimes and really think through your options. Um, The other thing, 
about your birth is you kind of, um, mm -hmm. what were you wearing? Um, lingerie. Were you wearing lingerie? <laughs> no. No. No, no I, but I was. I was wearing. Because people do. Actually, Sarah, Sarah advised, she's like, wear something you really like so that if you take pictures, or was it, what did you no, say? No, not like? about pictures. Like, I, it's about you feeling good. Like, feeling. That makes more sense than Sexy <laughs> or good or, you know, like, I wanted to wear something that made me feel sexy because I also wanted to, I don't know, just feel, I didn't want to feel, like, frumpy and gross, you know, like, covered in. <laughs> fluid and whatever I just wanted to feel like a sexy woman so I wore this lacy bra I mm -hmm. did and a that's skirt cute, cute. and so that I did not put on a hospital gown I wore a lacy bra <laughs> and the uh, flowers on it I'm like I didn't know you could do that you could do it it's you no problem yeah. I'm gonna have whatever. a conversation with my wife yeah. uh but I thought I thought you had to be in a gown they, they asked me if I wanted something and I said no and that's my wife part actually of that. my actually my wife brought her own gown. She bought a gown. Oh, okay. like uh, like a pretty pushers kind of thing. Um, I don't know what that is. They, they have should, like they literally. It's just like a, a decorative. Yes, PrettyPushers.com. She um, had the same concerns you probably did, but didn't yeah. know you could go that far. Yeah. No, I mean the the reason I brought it up, I don't, I don't remember exactly what you were, but the reason I brought it up was because it's kind of like you did get to that zone where you're like in a happy place and mm -hmm. there was intensity going on but it wasn't it didn't look intolerable it didn't look like you were having a bad time it looked like you were having a good time I mean at some points it almost felt good yeah like some of it felt so amazing like when I would get to the top of the you know I always pictured it as like waves like in the ocean and so I call them waves too and so like when I would get to the top of it it would just be like, whoa, and then coming down was like the release, you know, that it was just like, I knew that I could ride it because it was such a short period of time, and then I would have a, a minute to recoup and then go again, you know? Yeah. We are going to take a quick commercial break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. <laughs> I just feel like when when you're planning your uh, when you're planning your birth, it's really important to be surrounded by practitioners who are open minded, who are on the same page as you. I mean, you both had medical doctors at a hospital who were very laid back and supportive of giving birth to a larger than average baby, giving birth to a breech <coughs> baby. And the second thing is to kind of have a setting. It's such a fear based setting. All of mm -hmm. childbirth is fear based. Anything outside the textbook is even more fear based. And you have to create the setting you want. If you don't feel comfortable with your practitioner, you'll never be able to relax yeah. to the point where it feels okay. And if you if you go into a, all those stimuli around you, your body reacts to them. You're an animal. So if, if you go into the hospital and put on the gown, your body immediately feels like, I'm sick. You get an mm -hmm. IV, mm -hmm. it's like, we don't even think you're going to live, but at least we have this emergency <laughs> shunt to save you <laughs> just in case. There are bright lights. I, it there are bright lights. It smells like germicide. There are random people coming and going. It may honest. not have a huge effect on you, but but it's not that ana anatomically and physiologically different to conceive than to give birth. Right. I mean, it's yeah. the same anatomy and same physiology. If you had to conceive under those conditions, it would not even be close to the same experience as whatever your yeah, conception totally place of choice is. I, I understand what you're saying. I mean, my experience with that was not a negative one at all. They said, you know, I remember you suggesting me putting something on that I liked, and so I put the hospital gown on, but I had some sort of bra. But at the same time, I also <clears throat> knew that, well, for one, I got really hot at some point from just laboring. Mm -hmm. um, so I remember half of the gown kind of came off, but not completely. Dave, correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't remember entirely. And I think that at some point, the bra came off because I remembered that I really wanted to have the skin to skin the moment she came out. And if I had the bra on, that would be a barrier. Yeah. Um, so I think at some point the bra came off, but I don't remember at what point. But I was just hot and sweaty, and I just, I had, you know, Dave in one hand and my doula in another. And I, yeah, I, 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 I would, I would say just listening to you guys, you guys kind of owned your births. Yes. And in the military, they shave your head and give you the same clothes for boot camp, and they take away some of your personality to make you like everyone else. And it sounds like when you go into a hospital and you go through the rigmarole, they strip your identity and they get you into this conveyor belt that lets you go. And if you wear something different, you can kind of get your ownership back. It's mm -hmm. so like when I went in the military, I shaved my head, so I had my own ownership of that. It sounds like that's kind of 
Yeah. That's a really you kind of own your own birth. Really you own your own birth. Yeah. Um, Man, you don't talk a lot, but when yeah, I mean, you really comes it out, out. <laughs> it's like a it's like a bumper sticker. <laughs> that's worth waiting that almost really two cool. hours for that <laughs> <laughs> nugget of wisdom. But it's really so perfect. I mean, you yeah. have to own your birth. Not some yeah. people want one thing, some people want another yeah. thing. But you can set it up any way you want it to be. But, but the, the, you've got to put some planning in And you it. have the to team. find a physician who, yes. you know, is somebody who, when I when I knew that I had shoulder dystocia with my son or some sticky shoulders or whatever you want to call it, like his shoulders kind of got stuck, um, I was talking to my doctor and I was like, what do you do if my baby's shoulders get stuck? Like, tell me your whole thing. What do you do? What's the first thing that you do? And so he was like, well, I would massage the cervix and I would do, and that made me feel so good because that's what my midwife did. She massaged mm-hmm. my cervix and I was like, while I'm having contractions, you're going to massage my cervix and you're going to stick with it and you're le- going to let me like go through What if my cervix swells? You know, I was just like doing this whole thing with him and I was like, "Is are you going to take, you know, your hands in there and go, you know, and try to like negotiate the shoulders? Like what what's going to happen? And so he went through it all with me and made me feel, like, much better about it. Yeah, so. more comfortable. He also yeah. used, I think, a gallon and a half of coconut oil. <laughs> Eric uh, I used was, that. Oh, yeah. I don't know whoever was squirting it. I mean, it just, I thought I was going to drown. <laughs> 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 uh, but there's, in terms of the, um, you know, we've mentioned, obviously, the trust in your doctor. Um, but another large proportion of it for me for getting through the success lead was prep, prep. And prep also doesn't just mean make a plan and stick with it or read the books or get yourself in the mindset. It also means expect the unexpected. Mm. Prep yourself for the unexpected because it's most likely going to happen, but that's okay. You know, when Dave and I were planning our wedding, which is very different than having a baby, but a wedding planner um, who is a friend and who was at the wedding, not planning our wedding, she goes, just so you know, something's probably not going to go according to (laughs) planned. And just so you know, it's okay. Mm. And that put me in a mindset that was like, it's okay. Unpredictable things are okay. You'll handle them when, as you know, you'll cross that bridge as it comes. Yeah. And the same thing happens with birth. Prep yourself for the unexpected. Prep yourself for what you would like to do. You know, read. Don't listen to negativity, negative stories. And, and make sure you're with a doctor who you can absolutely trust to make the right decisions with you when the time comes. Yeah, 100%. Um, so. And for, I think, anybody who's getting married, it's great to start just before the wedding, to just have some wine and grilled cheese and um, <laughs> set the tone, get all relaxed and everything. Before you get married? Yeah, before the married. wedding. It's pretty similar. It's <laughs> pretty similar. All right. Brian, Elliot. you're about to have another kid. Did you pick up uh, any pearls of wisdom here? Oh, so much. Uh, I'm going to go home and hug my wife. That's a good. Always, <laughs> always a good thing to do. I'm gonna do. Produce uh, that oxytocin, man. I know. <laughs> yeah, and and you know you could be helpful by trying to annoy her a lot while she's in labor. It, Make her a given, laugh. It's a given. Kiss her. Yes, I know. I know. Love on I, her. I, yeah, it it is interesting though when we're in the room during when you guys are doing all that work. It, it it drives me a little crazy not being able to do, at least in my head, more to help. And 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 that's the thing that what I, that was my experience in there. I'm like, oh man, I'm. I mean, I'm holding her hand. I'm giving her words of encouragement and everything, but she's sitting here, you know, in, in this amount of, you know, I don't want to say pain, but she was in pain. And and I'm like, and, and you said it before, it just sucks to see you guys, you know, in any type of pain at all, in any cir- circumstance. Um, but it, it's, I, I, by the end of the, by the end of the, the birth of my daughter, it, we were both just smiling like crazy. Like, like when it was done, it wasn't even like a wind down period for Megan, she was just like, "Oh my God, let me see her. She is she pretty? Just tell me she's pretty." <laughs> like that's the first thing. What did you know? Because she couldn't. Because actually, she had the umbilical cord oh, right wrapped around her right. head for a little bit, mm-hmm. so that the whole like oompa loompas of pediatric helpers come <laughs> running in like <laughs> crazy, and and uh, and then uh, and there was also the is it meconium? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was happening. So, but even then, when they all came in and, and, and made sure she was okay, it lasted, it felt like it was an hour, but it was probably about a minute and a half mm-hmm. where they're just making sure she's okay. You have but, a pretty awesome doctor, too. Uh, yeah, Rothbart's, I love him. He's a great guy. That was my original doctor. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah? Who I absolutely Just before the breach. Before the, the, not the, with yes, your first baby. Not, not with River, yes. He was my first doctor for Sierra, and yeah. I absolutely adored him. He's great. And, and you know what, you mentioned... And in any other situation, I would have absolutely stuck with him. Yeah, he's our, he's our doctor, too. He's... 
He's amazing. Well, the yeah. key, I mean, he's such a good guy, and he's also so, the calmness that these Completely. doctors impart on you guys and us, too, when you're in there is just vital. And, uh, yeah. you know, I'm pretty sure I was talking about Star Wars about 10 seconds before my daughter was born. <laughs> so, um, anyway, but, but yeah, it, it, it's just, you guys are incredible that you're able to do it. You if know, you like haven't, you, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. No, I was going to say, you know, to see us in pain and feel helpless and all that stuff. One thing, and I know I, and Dave and I actually talked about this before the birth, was that what I needed to know more than anything else is that Dave genuinely trusted me and believed in me to, that I could get through this. Like, trust that I'm able to do this and believe that I can do this. And once I got that look, it wasn't even words. It was the look in his eyes that he believed I could do this. I believed I could do it myself. Um, and that is so much of it, you know. And I know Eric was definitely an unbelievably supportive. Like, he's so proud of you. Are you going to have uh, Cleary with you? We weren't planning on on having Cleary at the hospital, but after hearing your yeah, story really with Wyatt, I was like, wow, that's kind of amazing. It's a new thing. Um, it so, was pretty incredible. But, uh, but we're going to have a bunch of family, and, you know, especially Megan's family is going to be here. So, um, but we'll, the plan was to bring Cleary uh Y- you know, roughly around the time the, the baby's born, and then yeah. uh, she you guys come labor at our house because you live far away. Yeah, I mean, we'll swing by. You can swing by. Yeah, we we'll swing a great, by. A great tub. Or yeah, we <laughs> and then, and we already had a baby in there, so it's oh my god, it's and there's like unbelievable. two doulas there. Yeah, you got two. Doulas. I know, right? So if one of us gets tired, yeah, and you got cable. I'm in. We have grilled cheese. <laughs> yeah, grilled cheese. Yeah, ch- cheap wine, but it's, it'll do. Thank you very much all for sharing. Brian Herzlinger, I don't, I, so far I've only had the pleasure of seeing one of your movies. It was my date with Drew. Uh, well, thanks for watching it. Uh, it. I rarely laugh out loud. I can't even follow movies because of my face blindness, but I followed your movie because your cheeks are rosy red and I'm like, that's Brian, that's Brian, that's Brian. <laughs> uh, and your voice is kind of distinct, but um, it was entertaining. I, I laughed out loud. Thank at you that very movie. much. Um, I won't tell you how it ends, but um, essentially. He's got 30 days to get a date with Drew Barrymore, which is why when you were talking about that kid from E.T. before, uh, wasn't that Drew Barrymore also? Yes, yes. she was as a baby. Yeah. That's right. Not you baby, but very young. Young, young girl. So it always comes back to Drew Barrymore. It does. Yeah. Everything does. Um, but I'm going to check out Love Always Santa because uh, Jews like us love those Christmas movies. <laughs> 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 I love doing Christmas movies. It's so much fun. Yeah. November 6th, November 6th. Enjoy it. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, and uh, business owner Dave Olson, thanks for <laughs> joining us today and um, sharing. Honestly, I think the nugget of perspective that you brought in at the end is really powerful. Um, There's more borrow, than a nugget. Give him a little more. I'm going to borrow that. Yeah. No, so good things come in small packages. Golden nugget. It was a golden, golden nugget. nugget of perspective. <laughs> Dude, you're welcome. So you're, you're um, welcome thank right you very there. much. And uh, your wife, Daniela Rua, for joining us again and sharing your your story. Uh, round two, um, and Sarah Wright Olson, Sarah Faye Wright Olson dot com <laughs> for um, yours and mama dot com. Yours and mama dot com for more yeah. birth stories and pre-pregnancy. You guys share pregnancy. so much on there. Postpartum. It's an online village. It's an online village of, and of it's, moms. Uh, it's awesome. It's cool. It's, it's inspiring. And it's a, it feels like such a safe, warm environment. Thanks for making it. Thank you. So uh, for links and pictures and juicy bonus materials from this podcast, visit informpregnancy.com and feel free to send your questions and comments to info at informpregnancy.com. Doctor, doctor, give me the news. I got a whole.